Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland and this is part six of my series uh, Let's Learn Flutter Together. Um, so uh, I'm building an app in Flutter. Uh, it's a very simple app. It helps uh, managing expenses between two parties um, and really, really simple use case. You buy something for them, they buy something for you, or um, you buy something for both, and it's a 50-50 split. So, really easy. I will uh, need um, also to have um, two currencies right now, um, probably more than that in, in the future, maybe uh, have a configuration somewhere, but I need euros and Swiss francs. And, uh, well, we did the, f the form yesterday on the stream uh, where we added the, the uh, capacity to edit an expense and also create a new one. So what uh, I want to do tonight is add some kind of validation so that uh, we, can't, um, we can't submit the form if, for example, some fields are empty. Uh, stuff like that, and then uh, maybe if, uh, if that doesn't take too long, go to um, uh, persistence. So use some kind of persistence mechanism to store this data permanently so that we don't lose our uh, expenses. Uh, and, you know, when we, done, uh, when we shut the application down. But before that, I just uh, noticed that I have forgotten something on the app. So let me go to the main screen with the phone and we're going to send the app to the phone. So um, Visual Studio is going to run the Flutter SDK to build the app and send it to my Android phone. I could use the Linux desktop version to debug that but I like to have it on the phone so I can quickly see how the keyboard works. And, uh, and it's not exactly the same on the desktop, but it's really simple to turn this into a desktop app. There's only one configuration to change and then it turns into a wonderful uh, Linux native desktop app. So that's, uh, that's great. So here's the app. Uh, and we have a warning. I have never seen this warning in the in the console. A splash screen was provided to Flutter, but this is deprecated. Okay. Well, we are going to have a look at that later. It's not a problem right now. So what I meant is if I click on cookies, for example, there we go. Those are the cookies. But as you can see on the phone, if it would like to stay vertical. Oh. That that is not very good. What happened here? My USB-C cable is a little bit uh, sensible, I would say. So we should see the app again. Uh, yeah, so we have the paid by uh, selection, the title, the amount, the currency, but we don't know um, who uh, who was the recipient of this uh, expense. So they bought something, but did they buy that for me for? both of us i don't know so i'm going to add two checkboxes here or at least i'm going to try to add checkboxes so let's see uh we were there those are the buttons so we need to go above the buttons and this is the currency combo so yes that's uh what we need to be somewhere here uh, so I will, how can I call that? It's not target. I'm going to call that uh, maybe participants. I can always change that later. So I want a text here, a text widget. Okay. This text widget is going to need the same thing every text widget need a text and a style so let's copy and paste that Control c and Control v Inst instead of currency we put participants okay so those are the people who are involved in this expense 
And now I believe we will need something like what we used for the for the radio. So a row with an expanded something like that. Let's grab everything here. Um hello Eric. Hello Eric. <laughs> if I put my H uh at the right place, it's uh, it's better. How are you? Uh, I'm going to put that in here. And now it's not working, of course. Okay. Right, so it's going to put some radio boxes. And that's exactly what I don't want. What I want is a checkbox. I have no idea right now how to do that, but... I'm guessing checkbox. Yeah, checkbox is a good um, good guess. So it needs a value and an unchanged handler. Okay, that I know what it is. So that's gonna be that. Uh, probably one one too many here. Uh, it doesn't like that because this is supposed to take a value, which is going to be a boolean. Okay. Right, so, uh, what value should go there? Uh, well, I know what value should go there. It should be in the expense class. Uh, and uh, so there's a subject. That's the, the, ah, hmm, that's the wrong name. That's the name of the person who paid the expense. So let's rename that. Uh, Paid by the amount, the currency, and now we need two booleans. We need a boolean. Is it bool? Yeah, it's bool. We need a boolean for uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, I paid. Uh, paid um, for me. No, that, oh, that's that's it. That's for me and for them. Right. You're a bit sleepy after a long week. Okay. Fixed some internal air packages and had a great demo today. Yeah, I've I've heard that on the uh, on the Slimy AI uh, office hours. Thank you for the the hosting, Monica. Uh, this use material design toolkit. Yes, yes. It well. Let me bring the chat because I have a fancy chat thingy. Um, this uses Material Design Toolkit. Yes, it does. It looks very much like the Google interface design in their forms. It is. Yes, it is exactly that. But I'm going to show you something that is really exciting. If I can remember how to do that. Good evening, Monica. Welcome to the stream. And welcome, Raiders. My first raid. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so I want those booleans, and now it complains that they are not uh, filled uh, in this constructor because they are non nullable. So we need to say, okay, you need to give me a value for that. So that's how you do that. So that's them. And here we need to provide values when we build an empty. Um, an empty expense. So for me is going to be false. And then for them is going to be false too. So if anyone needs a recap about uh, what I'm doing here, please let me know in the chat. I will be more than happy to go uh, quickly over what I'm doing. And for them this dot for them so that's the clone function which helps me in a, from oh right eric eric i know you always complain that uh, visual studio code um screws your indentation or formatting look at that this is the flutter uh, language server so i had a comma here and then i hit save and boom it reformatted everything. It does everything. Oh! 
Sorry. I always do the same thing. I always forget that I uh, I have uh, the wrong window. Uh, and let's go to there, and there, and there. It should be... So let me try again. Yeah. So here we go. That's the, the big line that is wrongly indented. But then you add a comma at the end of this line and hit Ctrl S to save and it reformats everything. But the key is you need to put commas or uh, semicolons or stuff like that at the end of everything and it does magic. The Flutter language server for Visual Studio Code is exactly how every language server sh should be on Visual Studio Code. It is just amazing. So I have fixed my uh, my business class. Does that also work when the lines are already separated by the indentation is off for a few of them? Yes, it reformats everything. So let's uh, do this and that, and I hit Control S, and boom, it reformats everything. It's the ultimate language server I have I have seen. Right, my business class, my business model has been refactored. So now I believe I need to go down here. There we go. That's where we have our error. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. So we get. Thank you for the follow, Pixel Waves. Welcome to the show. How did you find me? Are you part of Monica's raid or did you find me? By accident. Uh, okay, so the value here is gonna come from the expense, and because we are doing uh, me, so that's for me. All right, and look at that. So I, I save here. I save my file, and it kind of indents it, but it, it's on one line here, and I don't really like that. So I add a comma here. It controls again, and boom. And also that, this comment here, this this thing that says slash slash checkbox, which means it's the end of this checkbox. It doesn't really exist. It's not there. It, just, it has just been added for my benefit. So that's, uh, that's really, uh, really great from, from the, uh, the Flutter team. They've done a great, great job. Okay, checkbox with uh, expense for me, text me, so we should do the same thing here. And go and get that here. And here we need a checkbox. Again, the value is going to be expense, expense. That's for them. And the unchange will be something that I'm going to do. Uh, Okay, unchange is a function. There we go, it needs a value. Okay, and that needs a comma so that it's properly formatted. Formatted. Okay, here we need to set the state, which means we're going to change something in the the value with the object that is displayed, and then we we're telling um flutter that it needs to redraw everything and what we're going to do now is we're going to do the opposite which is expense then dot for them equals value and comma so that it's formatted oh it doesn't work why value of the bool cannot be assigned to a variable of the bool yes so bool with a Question mark is a nullable bool, so it means it can be bool, it can be null, but this cannot be null. And frankly, I've never understood why a boolean could be null, because it's not a boolean if it can be true, false, or null. It's like a, a, a three lean. I, I don't know. But anyway, we know that if we arrive here, it's because we click on one of those. Well, we check one of those boxes. So I uh, 
I would do that. And that's a semicolon, not a uh, comma. And we need to do the same here. So here we need to set the state and say... Uh, set state. Okay. Come on. And now we need to say expense dot for me equals value bang. So this notation value exclamation marks means okay I know that value is maybe nil that could could be nil but I know it's not gonna be nil so treat it as it as if it will never be nil and so now it's a regular boolean and I can assign that to for me. Wow, you guys are chatty. I need to catch up. Let's go. What did you say? I see a lot of similarities to how I set up the Shiny Apps UI. Yeah, I guess, you know, there's only a, a certain way to, to do that kind of of, uh, of things, of declarative uh, UIs. It, this thing looks a lot like um, the... IQT, the Qt um, editor, where you can also uh, embed your, your widgets like that. Um, I guess it's just a question of syntax, probably. Pixel Web, thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Monica, for uh, cheering the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, indeed, too much nesting, Ali. I agree with you, and welcome to the chat. Uh, but that's the common problem with any language you will use to define a, a user interface. That's uh, that's what you've got to to deal with. Big says community time. I cannot join your stream just before you read it. Well, good timing and welcome. <laughs> Yes, bool can be nil. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe for database stuff, yes. Um, I don't like the idea that a boolean can be nil, but why not? We are boosting my chat stats. Yes, you're boosting my chat stats, and that's um, that's really what I need right now. I need to bring that average to three, I think it's... Uh, and since I've been doing a lot of, of streams with one or two people only, then I'm way below that. But yeah, that's going to go up tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I am using the Runwave streaming music too. Like uh, like like the good guys do, don't we? <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, let's go back to that. Um, so we have now... Um, checkboxes. Let's hot reload that. Uh, there's a problem. So we oh, it doesn't, there are many problems. We're going to fix that. Oh, yes, of course. So right now I am initializing from the home screen this uh, list of four expenses because I don't have any storage and I didn't want to create them by hand anytime. So for me. Let's say that that has been paid for me, so it should not be for me then. Let's say it's false and for them is true. Okay, and I am lazy, so let's copy and paste that. Ooh, I did something wrong here. Let me do that again. Copy. And, oh, I want a comma here. And we will see the magic in a moment. Paste that. That didn't work. Why? But why? I have this new keyboard that I bought from my from a colleague of mine. It's a mechanical keyboard, and I am not used to it yet. There we go. There we go. And then we're going to flip those values. So that's going to be true. That's going to be... Let's say the cookies were for both of us. And so that's going to be true. And that's not going to be for them because they don't like Marmite. And uh, I save that and boom. Uh, what? What is that? Hmm. Don't know. Maybe I crashed the language server. 
Alright, okay. Let's uh, see. Required name parameter for me must be provided. Why is that? Home screen. No, it's been fixed. So why are you complaining? Ah, it 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 hadn't uh, recompiled everything. Woo! Lots of chat again. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, so I've lost a little bit of the chat in the chat window, but I have the, the chat here. Uh, oh, Ubuntu on air. Welcome. Mechanical keyboards are the best. They are indeed. It's my first one, and I think I will never go back to a non-mechanical keyboard for, for home. Uh, at work, I just can't have that because, you know, we are... There's a lot of well, we're there's three of us, three of us, in the in the uh, in the room. So if we all add mechanical keyboard, it would be a little bit noisy. But anyway, I really want to get a cute but wireless one. Uh, does that exist? Wireless mechanical keyboards? Don't don't you lose the the low latency high Re reaction time of the mechanical keyboard if you have a wireless one. My launch keyboard is still really cool. I just haven't gotten used to their placement or the delete and backspace keys yet. Yeah, that's that's one of my problems. I need to get used to the fact that I have five micro keys uh, right on the left side. And so when I put my hands on the keyboard, my left hand is one column uh, too short, but too, too much to the left. I would argue that mechanical keyboards are more for typing field. Okay. Uh, uh, I, yeah, they're great for typing, but... Right, this thing seems to be crashed, or at least it won't restart. So let's go back to the main scene. I have stopped the app and press F5 and it's going to launch the app again. That happens sometimes when there are lots of um, big modifications. Um, it can't perform out reload or uh, or live reload very very well but um let's go it's building it's built yay so one day in the not too distant future i hope you might be able to download this app from the the google store why not you know right there we go we have our Expenses back on the phone. Let's click on the lemon tea. Having some tea drinkers in the chat, I guess. And them has been pre-selected. Let's check. Uh, let's check the code because it's not written in the uh, in the thing here. Lemon tea was for them. Good. Now, if we go to the marmite, that was for me. Yes, great. That works. Let's press cancel. And let's check the cookies that were for both of us. Great. But in, the, in fact, I'm going to unselect them and save. And if I go to the cookies again, it has worked. Just to prove that, I'm going to go to the milk and go back to cookies. It has worked. Great. I have the uh, checkboxes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, I need to go back and see what you guys are talking about. I don't think anyone really notices the low latency unless they're a professional gamer. Yes, true. I I don't think it's noticeable when you're doing code. Is there a way to preview your changes quickly without having to recompile every time? Yes, Eric. Uh, usually. <laughs> Wrong screen. Most of the time, it hot reloads in a, a, an instant. So let's, uh, let's change this lemon tea to... Uh, black, tea, black tea. Okay, look at the screen. I'm going to press save now. And there we go. You should have it. You should. You really should. Oh, I just selected the wrong thing to change. How does that work? Well, you see somewhere here, for example, I call set state. Okay. Set state 
tells Flutter, okay, I'm going to change something in the the model. I guess that uh, that is something you you. Oh yes, it did change Lemonti. I haven't seen that. Um, but that's the model. So I, I guess that's a notion that you are uh, familiar with. And then in, once that is changed, calling set state is going to rebuild the whole uh, the whole window. But it's optimized so that it, it knows which widget have changed and which haven't. And so it can do that very fast. So for example, let's uh, get one of the, those text, texts here. Uh, if we go to the form, uh, and the form is uh, is expense form here. And if we go here, so the paid by, where is it? It's here, and um, so now if I do, uh, let's add a bunch of stars, and then I click Control S, and boom, it's there. And that's really, really fast. And so I can remove that and that and save, and it goes really quick. Uh, using MVC, um, kind of, I would say. So you have. Um, you have those stateful widgets. Uh, let's if we go to the screen, for example. So that that's the stateful widget uh, here, and it uses a state. So I I would say this the widget is the is the view. This is kind of the controller, and then uh, the model is uh, hidden here. That's that's what in the set state. So when you call set state, you modify the model, and then the the view is updated automatically. <laughs> it's just a lot of normally priced marmite. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I chose that. Uh, it just came to me. Okay. Uh, now I have a problem with this form which is I don't have any kind of validation. So if I, yeah, actually we can try that. If I remove that and save, then there we go. We've lost, uh, we've lost the, the name of this thing. And although this could be perfectly legal, I don't want, I don't want that. So we need to perform some kind of form validation. I have pretty much no idea how to do that. I have read some stuff, but we're going to call our good friend Google form validation. Build a form with validation in Flutter. Uh, I think, yes, that's what I, I read last time. Uh, I need to do a global key somewhere and then use that to validate my form. So we need that in the creation of the state. So let's do that. <laughs> you are very okay with that. I call this portion defending your UI. Yes. I have to do all sorts of tricks in my apps to not let the user onto something crazy that breaks the rest of the app. Exactly. Exactly. That doesn't... That's... Supposedly that doesn't prevent you from rechecking uh, once you get the data. Uh, especially in web apps, it's not because you you protected your UI that you don't have to do it again on the server side uh, or the backend side, just in case someone you know just hacks uh, a URL to your server or something. Uh, okay, so that's here in the form, and that's gonna be somewhere here where I'm going to create this final form key global key. So the blue squiggly lines says that uh, it's not used. Uh, what does our Google front says then? Uh, then we create a form and we pass the key to the form before we create any widget. Okay, why not do that? Our form is created here and let's add this key. Okay, now, uh, now, 
a text form field with validation logic. So in our text form field, we need a validator that will return either null if everything is okay or a, an error message if it's not okay, right? Okay, I can do that. I am capable of doing that. Title here and that's gonna be somewhere here. Validator, yes, so that's a function. And it's not happy because this takes a string as its value. So let's have value. I have lost my OBS. There it is. And this validation is simply if value equals ah if value equals null or value is empty. Well, let's turn that around. If value question mark is not empty. Uh, no, if value question mark is not empty, then everything's good. Return null. Else return subject should not be null. And apparently, uh, this is a function, no? Um, this might be a function. The expression to a function. Ugh. What's wrong? A nullable expression can, can't be used as a condition. Try checking that the value isn't null before setting it. Ah, well, I thought I would be, I would be smart, but I am not. So if value is not null and value is not empty, then we do that. Okay, we can use it. Oh, it's a getter and setter, so we can uh, use without the parentheses. All right, uh, let's go to there and try to validate. Oh, I, no, I have forgotten something. I have forgotten. Create a button to validate and submit the form. I already have the button, but I need to add that somewhere here. Uh, let's go back to the form. My submit button is somewhere down here. And save. That's the save button. On press, I will do that and just save that and should format. Yes. If form key current state validate, if the form is valid, display a snack bar. No, I don't want to display a snack bar. If the form is valid, I need to pop to the color. There we go. And uh, if not, then probably it's not going to do anything. Let's uh, check that out. So if I go to here and then save, da -da -da. subject should not be new. Look at that. It is working. So null is not a is not something you tell your users because they have no idea what null means. Where is my subject? Is not should not be null. Here. But what they understand is empty. So if I now submit this form, subject should not be empty. There we go. So we have form validation. We need the same for the amount. Here we go. We need to add here a, a, a validator, which is going to be a function and it's going to take a value, which is a string, string, yes, string question mark. Now, this will be valid if, if value is not null and value is not empty. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so uh, it also needs to be a valid uh, double. So we, I guess, we're going to have to do do something like that. That is, if we convert to double and something wrong happens, then it's not a, a valid amount. But there, if we if we're there, then it's empty and it should not be empty. So return amount should not be empty. Okay, and if it's there, we're almost there, but we need to try and and convert that. Pre we probably just need to do that. And here we're going to do. Uh, return and it should be a valid number. Yeah, I don't like that, but that's that's gonna do for now. And here we return null to specify that everything is working correctly. All right. So let's go here and we're going to have some milk, but we will forget to give a price and save that. I'm on should not be empty. Ha! Silly me. It's 1.5.6 francs. Oh, it's not a valid number. Great. It's working. So 1.50 and save. Now I'm curious. What happens if I say one comma five? Is that a valid number? It is not. Great. Well, I don't know if it's great, but it's what I expected. Also, is it hard to learn Flutter? And welcome to the stream, Homeless 207. Or is it 207? I guess it's almost the same thing. Um, is it hard to learn Flutter? Uh... I always thought that learning a new language is not that hard if you already know two or three languages. If you if you can if you can wrap your head around um, syntax. So how do I how do I write a for loop? How do I do an if test in that particular language? Then really doing a, a, an if test or a for loop in Python or doing it in Flutter, it's just a question of learning the syntax. Um, so that, uh, let, let me just clarify that. That's for Dart. Dart is the language you see here. Flutter is a collection of libraries and widgets that, uh, that you will use to create interfaces, uh, GUIs. And then it's the, the whole SDK compiler thing that compiles for Android, iPhone, Linux binaries, native, native Linux binaries, native Mac OS binaries, and native um, uh, Windows binaries. So let me show you something real quick here. I'm going to stop this app. So this app was running on my uh, phone right now. So now it's not, not running anymore. And if I go here, down here, if you see my, my mouse, it says Nokia 7 Plus Android ARM64. I'm going to change that to Linux, Dex Linux Desktop. And that's all I'm doing. And now I'm pressing F5 to run the application again. And in a few seconds, you will see in front of your eyes that exact same app, but now as a native Linux binary. There it comes. There it is. That's the exact same app. It's the exact same code. I haven't changed anything. I haven't changed a single uh, include or whatever. And it's the exact same one. If I go here and I remove that and I press save, we've got the same thing. It's exactly the same. It's just a binary for Linux. This is awesome. And while we're here, let me try something 
Let me try something. Uh, how did I do that? Uh, huh, I need to cheat. So let, let me open a, an off screen web browser and go to this, this. Uh, I want to go. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm clearly gonna cheat and have a look at something there we go and what i want is this uh, this here i want that and you will probably understand pretty quick pretty fast what i'm doing i need to put that in my dependencies so here look at that what can that be? And then I need to go to... Do, 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 do. Uh, not here. Where, where is my... Uh, uh, here and here. And now I need to say... That. Go back to my main screen. And I'm going to go back to the chat to see your reaction. I'm going to change that to that uh, that yes and then i'm going to auto import that uh or maybe i'm not going to auto import that uh, maybe i need to go to my cheat sheet again and i need that that i need to put that here uh, uh i need to run flutter pubgit or I, I will let's flutter do that uh no it's not it doesn't want to do that. Okay, uh, let's. What? Current 12 of person expect something. Did the app crashed? Yes, I stopped it. Okay, let's try. Uh, let's try um, Flutter get. And it doesn't like that. Oh, uh, well, let's uh, say that. All right. I don't know what happened here, but uh, apparently I have conflict. Uh, I want this. I have conflict I didn't know I had. Uh, yes, what does the directive override mean? Uh, which ones? The, in, in the pips, pips spec YAML? Those? This file here is wo uh, where you set up um, versions of uh, the environment you need, the dependencies you need, the uh, package you will import in your application, and the dev dependencies. Kind of like um, uh, in... Uh, not JS, where you define your, your dependencies like that. In the class, you meant. Okay, let's go see the class. Uh, that, uh, that's because my app extends this uh, class. And then because I redefined this method, I need to add the override, um, at override tag. It's, um, it's not like in C, C++, where you would just override the, the method and it would Call it. So you need to here. You need to specify that. Uh, target of URI doesn't exist. Package here. We are that. Try creating a pair reference. No, I want to. I want you to to actually realize that this package is there. It's not helping me tonight. Show us. Uh, news important. News import. analysis. The include file. Oh, there we go. The include file can't be found. I broke something, I think. So I'm going to guess that pip spec lock can be removed without problem and it will be regenerated when we rerun the app. But it still has a problem, apparently. Flutter lins, flutter yaml. 
I am sorry about that. I just wanted to show you some cool stuff and it's not really cooperative. So let's remove that. Uh, and if I press F5, no, it doesn't want. It doesn't want to... The include file, package, flutter lines, flutter YAML in opt flutter project experience analysis option YAML can't be found when analy analyzing the project. So you need this package. It's not been installed or something. Uh, maybe I broke the... Uh, let, me, let me try something. I go to the control thing and then roll back that and roll back the that's it now what does it say now it says expected column which file which file Ah, uh, this one. This one is uh, so accept incoming change and accept incoming change. Well, live debugging. That's always great. So now Flutter Pubgate doesn't complain anymore. And so can we run the app? No. Show errors. That's weird. Well, let's do that. Uh, well, you won't see any Yaru theme tonight. Sorry, I have seen the Yaru the Yaru um, the Yaru theme on, on Linux, and it works great. And also great on also works great on the phone. All right, we're going to go back to the phone. We need to go to the, our uh, storage. Are the Flutter's dependencies written in a YAML file? Yes. It's difficult, this project. I will never do a project like this. It's too big. It, it's not too big. It's a really small project. Uh, I, I, well, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I, I know... I know this thing more than you do, but I don't feel that it's uh, really, it's really complex. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's the uh, simplest thing I have uh, I could come up with to think to to begin learning uh, Flutter. Right. Uh, apparently, we don't need uh, this package, so let's remove it. Uh, yes, yeah, so now I would like to store some some data on the phone and find the data when I come back. Because if you have a look at what we're doing right now, uh, if I go to the uh, home screen, as I said, I have those um, expenses, hard-coded expenses. But if I do this... Uh, I will wait for the app to be compiled before I save that, although it might be saving it automatically. I don't know. Um, well, we're going to have a very empty application, a very empty list of expenses. So let's uh, save that. And it should reload in a moment. Maybe. If it doesn't, then we're going to force it. Yes, it won't because I changed the model. I didn't change anything else. Hot reload. Maybe that will work. Yes. So that's uh, what we get when we don't we don't have anything. And then if I go and create a new one by pressing the plus button, paid by me something uh, for twelve what uh, francs for me, which is stupid. And then save. Here, here's the the expense. But then I stop the app and I start it again and of course we have lost everything so we are going to implement um, uh, persistence all right let's go back to our 
Friend Google. Flutter. Persist data. Persistence in Flutter. And I will probably want to persist data with SQLite. Because that's what we need to do. Add a dependency to work with SQLite database, import the SQL the SQF Lite and path packages. Okay, so we need to add that to our dependency. Uh, let's go Visual Studio Code, pubspec, YAML. Uh, go away, I don't want you here. Pubspec, YAML. And I want to add that here. That's that. And it should run. Yes, it runs Flutter PubGet. And they are, they are now installed. So why wasn't I able to add the Yaru package? I don't know. Let's try again. Just because I'm stubborn. Yes, and then... At the Yaru Yaru icon, maybe Yaru. No, Yaru icons. Well, Yaru should be okay enough, but icons. Uh, okay, it's getting the Yaru icons. No, it's not your icons. Okay, well, let's forget about that. Uh, I'll just do that. Um, we won't do that. Oh, crap. Okay, uh, what does Google say about the persistence? Uh, make sure to import the packages in the file you'll be working in. So we need that. In the file I will be working in, that's gonna be in my on my home screen, I guess. Each time I get a new one, let's do that. Yes, we're not using this. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes, I am stubborn, and I will get to the bottom of this and and understand why it's wor it's not working. Uh, we already have a model that's our expense class, so we don't need to do anything. Open the database. Before reading and writing to the database, open a connection to the database. This involves two steps. Define the path to the database file using get database path from the SQF, SQF light package. Combine with join. No, no, no. Open the database with open database. Okay, and we have a an example here. Avoid errors causing by Flutter upgrade. Import package Flutter widgets that is required. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, maybe not. File database, open database, the join, await, get database path, doggy database. Yes, well, that's not going to be doggy but database, but... So we need to open the, data the database. I don't really know where I'm supposed to do that. Let's say... Uh, let's say we have a constructor for home screen. Okay, and then we can do that in the constructor. Maybe. Uh, await. Where, where is it? Uh, unexpected text await. Try removing the text. That's what we, That's where it gets a little bit fuzzy because I haven't read anything about uh, about the. Um, storage part. Uh, so that's going to be expand. Uh, let's call that by the name of the app. Expands for two. The DB. Uh, what's wrong? The argument type future string can't be assigned to parameter type string. Ooh. This is not used. Okay. In order for the keyword await, the code must be placed inside an async function. You should place all the following table on the function inside void main async. Really? 
So I should open that database in my main in my main function. Mm, I am surprised. I am surprised. Uh, oh, we need to define the open database function. Okay, that makes sense. No, that doesn't make sense. That that's uh, that's not a definition of a function. That is uh, calling that function. Don't they have like a a complete example? Oh, there's the complete example. So there's a void main async, which does that, opens the database, inserts a few things in there, and then... Huh. That doesn't help me, help me much. That doesn't help me at all, actually. <laughs> so I see what I need to do. I just don't know where I'm supposed to do it. What is this uh, main function that they're talking about? I have no idea. Create a new Flutter project. Add those dependencies. Paste the following code into a file called lib db, db underscore test dot dot. Run the code with flutter run lib db. Uh, huh. How do I do that in a, an actual app? That's uh, weird. It's probably not that. It's probably not not the way, the right way to do things. Uh, let's see. Flutter. SQLite example. Uh, do they have more? No, they don't have uh, more information on opening a database. database. Yes, but that is not going to work. If I do that somewhere like uh, here. Can we just specify that this is just suddenly async? No. No, we can't. So... Do they have some like real real world examples? SQLite, SQLite example. Uh, Android, yes. Oh no, that's the Android part. That's not what I want. Lib. Lib main dot dot. What do they do here? Do they do something with the, the database? No, I don't. I don't think they do. So, get that. Uh, looks, they're not. They're not doing that here. Uh, so where? Where? I hate that. They should have. That, that, that should be. Uh, that should be a doc file with uh, many samples, and there's, there are not. SQL helpers, read results, transaction, batch support, table and current support. Uh, I just. How to guide. 
How to open, how to open an asset database. Uh, how to open a database, it's not, it's just, it's what I just saw. So we need to be inside an async function. SQLite uh, Flutter Example uh, Flutter and SQLite Crude Example uh, Maybe A Preview Database Structure The Code What I'm interested in, in is that so in main the dot main run up my app my app extends stateless widget yes okay so far so good uh state yes is loading refresh very refresh journals i think oh so in init state we can call an async function that would open the database Ah, uh, that's interesting. That now we're going somewhere. Now we're going somewhere. So let's remove this. And um, they call their thing in init state. Where is init state? Init state is in the state class. So here, and then we need to override in its state. Huh. And that doesn't take any argument. And we need to call prepare that in its state. Okay. And then we need to call underscore in it database something like that i would say and we would define here that function which is a void async okay void init the tabas async ah that seems to to be more like it so if we go back to the flutter thingy then we need to open that database. Uh, and they said to call that widget. Okay, so now that we've got some basic stuff, final database, open database, set the path to the database. Okay, uh, that's not going to be that. That's going to be uh, expense for two. A DB, when the database is first created, create a table to store the dogs. Except we don't store dogs, but. And then set the version, this executes the unCreate function and provides a path to perform database upgrades and downgrades. Right, okay. Um, so, we need to create a table to store some expenses. Okay, create table expenses. ID integer primary key, yes. We're going to go very simple right now. I just want to see if that works. So we are only going to store subject and uh, and maybe paid, paid by those are two strings that we can easily store in the database. So name paid by, which is a text. Uh, by the books. Uh, now we need to ha to add uh, do, 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 uh, the subject. Subject before. Subject paid by, uh, which is a text. Well, let's, uh, let's move on. Amund, uh, which is a uh, double. What was the integer? So I'm going to guess double. 
Amount double. What else do we have in there? The, the string and two boolean. So currency, currency is a text. And then we have for me, bool. Let's, let's try that. And for them, bool. Okay, it's going to create a table, hopefully. Uh, what else? Uh, well, we can see if that works. Let's uh, re re compile and rerun the, the app because we've changed a lot of stuff in there. See if we have any error, and maybe we'll see a file appear on. Oh no, it's on the phone. It's going to be stored on the phone. Hmm, which means I should have uh, printed stuff like on on, on create. I should have. Printing something on the console to just uh, see if um, it does what it says it will do. Come on, Gradle. Come on, it's compiling. Hopefully it will uh, do that in a timely fashion. But if it doesn't, I will kill it and... Uh, restart the app completely because it doesn't seem to be doing a uh, lot of stuff like oh installing yes yes it's installing it will soon there we go it is black and now it's going to appear on the screen hooray uh so it didn't crash, which is uh, which is good, and hopefully it created a table. Okay, let's uh, let's have a look at. Then what do they say? Future of void inset dog. So that's a function that will return the future. We probably need something like that for our our um, expenses so insert expense I'm going to go and select every instance of dog and replace that with expense except this should be expense with a little e uh, and then await database undefined database well it's there how can it be oh that's in the same function hmm what if I do this the set of database isn't defined for the type home screen status uh, but ah I need to define it somewhere here like database database uh what kind of thing is that it's a future it's a database database it's probably a database with a question mark and now that is not working a value of future database can be assigned to a value of database mm, okay so then uh, now, non deliver instance with database must be initialized uh, later. I think it's uh, late, yes. Late database, database, and it's going to be... Uh, so it wants a future? That's weird. Future. It wants a future database. All right, now everything is working. All right, so now we go and we await for the database. Ah, yes, okay. So that's going to create uh, that here. It's going to create an, a colon asynchronous function that may or may not finish uh, quickly. And so that 
allows us to wait for the subject to be fully built. Okay. Then await db.insert expenses. So what's that? That's the name of the table. Uh, so the table is expenses with a small e. Then expense the to map. That is something that we're going to have to write. And then that. So to map isn't defined. And it should then be a map of string to object. Expense should be a map of string to object. So if we go here and do map of string object to map. Uh, okay, so so var map equals map of string object and then map dot oh, maybe like that subject equals this subject and of course return map that seems to be working so let's continue with the the other fields okay map of amount equals this that amount map of uh, currency equals this that currency and map of for me equal this dot for me and map of for them equals this dot for them okay and return map and then this is now happy and this should allow us to insert an expense. So why? What if we were to? But uncreate, uncreate will not do anything. Now I believe. Hot reload complete. No, it doesn't do anything. Hot, hot restart. What would the hot restart do? Not a lot. And if I stop and restart the app completely, launching, will it tell us something? Uh, yes, so that's the good, uh, the good output. That is not gonna. It should not print on create because the database already exists. Now the question is, how do I destroy a database? Because I would rather, you know, have to recreate it. I would prefer to destroy and recreate the database each time until I'm happy with the results. Flutter, Flutter, SQLite, destroy, delete database. Yes. Get a location using that and await delete database path. Okay. Okay, so await. So here. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, okay, so va database pay path equals that. And okay, but before I do that, I want to, I want to await delete that 
and that goes here and now the database will be deleted and when I open the database I should go to the uncreate uh, I go through the uncreate um, function callback whatever it's called am I actually showing what uh, I'm not sure this is the output of my of my app. Uh, do I call in it database somewhere? For, somewhere? Yes, here. I am, am I passing here? Print init state. I can do better than print init state. I can do a breakpoint and reload. I am passing here and then if I go inside there I wait for the bindings I've got my database path okay which is data user 0 okay so that's a path inside the phone then I wait for the database to be deleted okay and then I continue there and now I'm on the on create thing but I don't see any on create printed in the on the console. That's because I was not on the right console. Okay, so now it's working, and now I know it's going to create the table. Okay. Um, for the sake of testing, I will now uh, call. I will now call. Uh, so now it shouldn't say on create because it has already been on, uh, created. But I would like to insert some expense in there. Open database is the future. So if I do that, it's not going to work. Yes. But I can probably do a wait database. That will wait for the database to be ready. And now I want to call insert expense. And I want to create a new expense uh, subject. Milk. Paid by me for 12.2 euros for me true and for them true. There we go. Hopefully this is going to work. How can I make sure it works? Probably some kind of hot reload or something. Okay, so in its state, I'm good with that. And then it creates the database and then it inserts some stuff in it. Ah! Ha ha! An exception occurred. Table expenses as no column named pay the pay, pay the okay 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 where did I make a mistake here yes oh I stopped the app it's good when you have um exceptions or er error reported it means it actually it's it is actually doing something because when you don't have any feedback from your app or from your system or from your database well you don't know if it's working at all okay we are about to 
see if we can store one record in the database. Database? Database? Whatever it's called in proper English. Uh, let's see, did that work? Invalid argument through with type bool. Only num string and u int 8 list are supported. Okay, uh, what does that mean? Invalid argument true with type bool. Only num strings and u int 8 lists. Does that mean that it actually wants this to be so in here it doesn't want the boolean so if it's for me then one else zero then one else zero I'm guessing that's what it means does the hot reload goes here yes it does and then we're here okay we need a breakpoint here that didn't trigger any warning or message so now we want to read that back we want to read that back and fill this array. How do we do that? We did our in uh, um, the, in our init state and then in our build function. I'm guessing init state is where I want this to happen. And so init database, I want to be able to to wait for that in the database is here and it goes all the way down here so it has insert inserted an expense and so if i do a wait here i know that the expense has been inserted uh, well, we, later on i will remove that so now that's okay i can now go here and I'm going to do what's the name of my variable expenses expenses equals and then I need an await of get expenses and get expense expenses will be a async function and it will return a list of expense and uh, it complains Maybe because I don't have a return statement. Uh, that's not going to work. That's probably going to be better. No, a function body must be provided. What did I do? What did I, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's an async, so it needs to return a future anyway. So that's going to be a future of array of expense. But why isn't is that not working? It's a list because uh, I I'm thinking Python when I write Flutter. I need to stop doing two languages at once. All right, list of expenses. That's much better. Okay. Where are we going to get our list of expenses? Well, that's going to be a query. And we can go back to Google and see how they they do the query. Uh, insert, no, I want to select a dog. 
select a dog? How do I select a dog? Dogs. Future list of dog dogs. It's exactly what I want, except I don't want dogs. But that's exactly what I want. So control V to paste that. We await for the database to be ready. And then we're going to query that. db.query. And we want all the expenses. Expense. What's the name of the table? Expenses. Okay, so that brings me... Uh, Query the table for all the dog. Yes, so we want all the expenses. Okay, so that gives us a list of map of string di dynamics. Okay. So if I don't understand that correctly, it's each row in the database is returned as a map of string dynamic because it doesn't know what goes in there. Yes. Okay. I understand that. Okay, convert the list of map of string dynamic into a list of dog. Well, it's going to be a list of expense, but yes, list.generate map.length. And then that should probably, that is probably the index. Oh, that's the, the key. That's the column name. That's the key. Okay. And return expense. And now. Uh, uh, we will let the compiler do the work for us. There we go. We want that. And a semicolon here. Subject is going to be... Maps of E. Oh, no. E is the... Uh, okay. I, not e, I is the, the row number. Okay. So that's subject. Paid by is uh, maps. Let's see. Maps of I paid by. Okay, amount. We didn't change anything about amount because it's a number, so it was stored as is. Currency. Okay, and uh, for me. Now, for me, it's going to be a needs to be a boolean. So it's true if for me equals equals one, and it's going to be false otherwise. Same here. It's true if that equals one. I'm guessing. Then why? wasn't that formatted properly I don't know but apparently the formatter is broken or something that usually means there's a, an error somewhere and there is there is so return lists generate a generate is a list of expense Okay, we're waiting for the database e here. We're waiting for the query here, so it's not a, it's not an async function. It is an async function, but we get here. Function mark async must have a return type assignable to future. Okay, so it needs to be that because we're waiting for stuff. But here, what's going on? But I can't do that. I can't do that, right? Void, I think so. So get expense could be async, but if it is async, Do I have to await the exp I can't I can't awake await because of that. I don't understand how to do that. Thank you, Monica, for joining the stream. 
I hope I will be yeah affiliate sometime. Thank you very much for the raid and uh, and for uh, chatting in the in, in the, the chat. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Okay, this is a future listened. So where do I get that? I don't know where they use dogs. Print await dogs, I bet they are already in, in an async function. Uh, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to do that? Because it is async. It is async because I, I need that because of the await here. So the, yeah. That's something I don't understand. Expense, get expenses, a value of type future cannot be assigned to it. Try changing the type of the variable or casting the right hand type to list. No. It's not what I want. There's probably something here. Yes, there we go. That's get expense then. Then and then. There we go. Get expenses then, and that a list of expense, we can assign that here. Uh, probably call set state on that. Probably, and um, let's write some stuff in there so any database we can then do that print print deleted deleting database and then here database deleted Uh, then print creating table. Oh, so it's going to do stuff. No, it just uh, it doesn't reinitialize reinitializes everything. Okay. Then print. Ins inserting record okay and then okay so that calls insert expense okay and then let's see print getting expenses and then um, another print here, print setting state with expenses dot length expenses return return from returned from that demand okay so my guess is we need to stop and start this application again what will that give us
It's building, it's installing, and it's starting. And then field database has not been initialized. Okay. Where? Where are we exactly? Field database has not been initialized. But I don't know where we were, so... <clears throat> Oh, so that's my late, uh, that's that. And my guess is it can't be null. Okay, so how do I, how do I initialize that? Can I have that as a, a variable? No, because it needs to be in a nothing function. Oh, but I, yeah, okay. So let's do this. And then remove this. Uh, no, that's a database path. Um, uh, okay. So what did he complain about exactly? That the variable was not initialized. But I can't open the database. That is... Uh, Strange. Yeah. Late error. Field database has not been initialized. I agree. I agree. And then it's not happy, but then it it moves on. Oh, it went to, through init state and then through get expenses. It went through init state. Here. And then get expenses and then he said it said uh uh no can do dude well let's try one one last time to try and and understand what's going on and if i do not understand then i will call it a night I'll come back to that tomorrow. Okay, so far no exception. Get into get expense. And then step over and then it says database has not been initialized. Okay. Okay, so now I understand if I understand it correctly. Init database hasn't finished, or there's something that has not been that hasn't been done properly, and then it comes here and it gets to get expenses inside get expenses here. It tries to get the database, but it's not. It's not even initialized. That's what it says. It's not even initialized. Oh, I bet it's still here. Uh, huh. So 
so... So what? Yeah, we arrived that there and it hasn't... It hasn't finished yet. And if I continue... Then... Only now... Am I at the database? It took a long time for... For this function to complete. So I probably don't need to wait databases here. I don't think. Although maybe I do. But the thing is the thing is that's a nothing function, so so any database should be should have a then no. Oh no it's a it's a nothing that returns what? Void. No. No, it should return a future a void. And now we can do init database, then and then get expense. Then so I'm gonna guess it works like any other uh, async thingies, but it doesn't. Apparently, the argument type future list of expense function can't be assigned to a parameter future or dynamic function void. Oh, that's because there we need to tell it that it's the future uh, list of expense. Uh, then future list of expense. The argument type future uh, function. No. No. What is wrong here? The argument type future list of expense function can't be assigned to the parameter type future or future. Or uh, so I probably don't need that. That's what I thought. Oh crap. What is going on? Well, I'm going to chain them the way I know how to chain them. And I'm going to do then, then, then that. Except it doesn't want to do that. The argument type null function cannot be assigned to the parameter type shooter or dynamic. So what's... Uh... <sighs> then... Okay, but why is that not working? Okay, so it wants it wants this to return a future. So return get expenses. Cannot be can't be assigned to parameter type future or dynamic function void. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Huh. Because then I, w I wanted to do that. And value will be... We don't know. Flutter, chain, futures. Then a value return expensive B. Chain dot future. Right, it's dot actually. Future string for the string, then release the connect. They can use a nested assignment to avoid curly braces and return. But it doesn't work. Connect, then... I don't understand. I don't understand. In its database, then... But in its database is a future of void. Okay, then I don't have any function here. Can I do that? No, I can't. It's void, so... It's a future of void. So it, it will not return anything. Uh, does it expect... Oh, it expects... Uh, Null function. Uh, I don't know. Why was it easy to do? Why was it easy to do that? Get expense. Then value set state set state but not st set then value expenses equals value So that's pretty easy. That's not working. So it is a null function in there and it says no you want a you want to give me a future A function that returns a future or a dynamic, and that still doesn't work. And I don't, I don't understand why. C 
So if init database was returning something, maybe that could What if you were returning the database? Then this would be happy. And this would not be happy. But now this would be happy and that would be a database which I don't really care about except if I had here written get expenses that would work and then I could do then value expenses equals value and then I could do that but I can't do that if it's a void. Okay, I guess I can live with that. And now I should have my breakpoints here working. And then, and then I will get expenses. Uh, so yeah, I will leave the breakpoints here. And then I would set the value. Let's see if that is working. It's a bit complex this part because of the uh, of all the asynchro asynchronous uh, function call and all that stuff. I need to read about chaining future of void. Uh, where do we stop? We are in at inserting record. So the database has been initialized. Okay. And now we are going to await for the database. And yeah, it's working. So we move on and then we're going to assign value, which is a list with one item that we got from the database. Yay. But I forgot the set state, but it did work. So if I change now, if I go here and go say set state, set state and that, and that is a victory there we go so that gets the data from the database uh, except we are we are destroying the database every time and recreating it and inserting the record so we're going to keep this code in here because I have a feeling it's gonna be handy at some point we create the database and then we don't insert a record in there. And then we return the database for whatever reason. Well, actually, actually, let's uh, remove this. Let's say this is a bar. Then we return that. Oh, but the insert expense will need the database at some point. But let's see. If we're here, then we get the database here. And we can pass the database to this function. And we're going to call that database. Okay. But then expense doesn't need a database right now. But it's going to need one here okay and then we're going to await for the database do we have to probably not it's already there okay and so now where are we we're here uh, and then we set state with the expenses and get expenses gets 
the thing from the database. So we should have... Oh. Where's the error? Database, database. Database. Undefined name database. Where? Oh, here. Yes, so insert expense. We're going to command that out right now. And we'll see to it. We'll see later. Uh, rerun the app. And now it should get the one and only expense available in the system. And get it from the database and display it when the application starts. And that will give us the basis for our next stream, which is going to be um, storing, retrieving, and upgrading data from the database. There we go. We have our database here. This has been loaded from a storage inside the phone. All right, I need to figure out a way to delete an expense. Maybe I will add a button somewhere here. Anyway. That's going to be it for today, or well, tonight, I guess. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining. Let's have a look who's there, who has been there. I think we still, I mean, we might still have uh, people lurking. I see uh, our podcast is still there. Ubuntu on Air is still there. Extra more, more is still there. Dev B, another TV viewer. Thank you for being there, if you are. If you are not, well, thank you anyway. Um, this has been a little bit uh, less productive than what, what I expected, although I was kind of aware that the, the database thing was going to be some, uh, some something harder. I should have read a little bit more about that, but I knew what I wanted to do. I didn't know how to do it. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody for joining me and chatting in the in the chat in the Twitch Twitch chat <laughs> um, if you are uh, interested by this content uh, give us a follow tell a friend um, trying to get to affiliate so uh, yes the more the more people uh, uh, following and chatting in the chat uh, the faster that's going to be thank you very much um, this is going to be archived on YouTube probably in the next few days. If not, well, I'm going to do some more of those. I will be back sometime tomorrow, don't know when, probably during the day, uh, European day. Uh, and uh, I will talk to you then. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>